Hello teacher, hello students, I'm Heron Dimsey. Welcome to your first day of your plasma television lesson on the meaning and scope of economics. Let me start the lesson by explaining the evolution of the word economics. The word economics originated from the Greek word oikoino mykos. Oikos means home and nomos means management. Together, these two words give the meaning of economics, that is, home management, or the one who manages the household. Students, let me ask you a question based on the meaning of economics as I described earlier. Discuss this question with the student sitting next to you. I hope you had a good discussion. Now, compare your answers with the following. Family heads manage their home by providing the necessary resources required by family members so as to fulfill the unlimited wants of the family members. I am sure you have observed that members of your family have various needs such as food, clothing, education, and that their wants are different. However, the amount of the family earned is limited compared to their needs and wants. Therefore, the family has to make choices by prioritizing their needs. Given the limited amount of resources they have, and the unlimited needs and wants of the family, family heads try to maximize the satisfaction and the well-being of the family members. Students, I'm going to ask you another question. Again, discuss with the student sitting next to you. Thank you.
I hope you have discussed the meaning of economics in pairs. Now let's see what economics is together. If we consider the whole society as a family, then the society also faces the problem of fulfilling its unlimited wants with the limited resources it has during a given period of time. As it is the case in your family, scarcity of resources forces societies to set priorities and make choices. Thus, economics means the study of the way in which mankind organises itself to tackle the basic problems of gaps between wants of the members of the society and the limited resources available in that society. All societies have more wants than resources. Hence, a system must be devised to allocate these resources between competing ends. Students, the importance of managing economics is currently increasing. As you may know, the world economy has been suffering from global economic recessions since December 2007. Poverty, unemployment, inflation, population explosion are some of the problems that affect almost every country regardless of their level of development. Providing solutions to these problems require adequate knowledge of the principles of economics. Now let's discuss the historical evolution of the subject as a discipline. Economics as a separate discipline emerged about 200 years ago. It emerged after a famous publication called An Inquiry into the Nature and Causes of the Wealth of Nations that was published by Adam Smith in the year 1776. Adam Smith is considered as a father of modern economics. There are also a number of other famous economists that have contributed a lot for the development of economics as a discipline. These include Karl Marx, Alfred Marshall, Lionel Robbins. Now, let us move to our second topic that is defining the term economics from different perspectives. Particularly, economics is defined from the perspective of wealth, welfare and scarcity. From the perspective of wealth, Adam Smith has defined economics as the study of the nature and causes of nation's wealth or simply as the study of wealth. Other classical economists have also defined economics from this perspective. Let's discuss the features of the definitions from wealth perspective. The wealth perspective definitions of economics have the following features. It gives too much importance to the creation of wealth in an economy. It defines economics as an inquiry into the causes behind the creation of wealth, it perceives wealth of a nation only as material goods which can be seen or touched. Non-material goods such as services of teachers, doctors are not considered as wealth. Now let's see how economics is defined from a welfare perspective. According to Alfred Marshall, economics from a welfare perspective is defined as a study of mankind and the ordinary business of life. Thus, economics from a welfare perspective is, on the one side,
the study of wealth, and on the other, it is a part of the study of man. Students, the welfare perspective definitions of economics has the following features. The first feature, which is the study of material requisites of well-being, indicates that economics studies only the material aspects of well-being or economic welfare. The second feature, which refers to its focus on the ordinary business of life, implies that economics inquires how an individual gets income and how the income is used. The third feature stresses the role of man in the creation of wealth or income. Students, let's now proceed to the scarcity perspective of defining economics. According to Lionel Robbins, economics is a science which studies human behaviour as a relationship between ends and scarce means which have alternative uses. Students, the scarcity perspective definitions of economics have the following features. Human wants are unlimited. There are limited resources to satisfy human wants. There are alternative uses of scarce resources. There is need for efficient use of scarce resources. There is need for choice and optimization. Students, before we see the features in detail, I want you to discuss the meaning of the first two features with the students sitting next to you. I hope you have discussed the meaning of the features. Now let's do it together. Human wants are the desires of consumers to obtain and use various goods. For example, bread, shoes, books and so on. And services, for example, a doctor's visit, haircut, city bus service, and so on. These wants provide pleasure or satisfaction for them. The scarcity definition of economics states that these wants are unlimited. It means that when one want is satisfied, another want will emerge. Let's see what we mean by resources are too limited to satisfy human wants. It means that while wants are unlimited, the means or resources for satisfying these wants are limited. 
For example, people's monthly or annual money income and the area of land that is available in a country are limited in supply. Any resource is considered as scarce if its supply is less than its demand. Students, some resources can be used to satisfy different types of human wants. Now, I want you to jot down the alternative uses of certain plots of land in your area. I hope you have answered the question correctly. The alternative uses of land include use of land for agricultural purposes, for construction of different types of buildings, or land can be used for recreational purposes. Since resources are limited and human wants are unlimited, the scarce or limited resources should be used in an efficient manner for the satisfaction of unlimited human wants. Therefore, people have to choose between the most urgent and less urgent wants. Now, let's summarize the definitions of economics. Every definition of economics is subject to criticism. However, each definition shares universal truths about what economics is and what it is concerned about. These are human wants are unlimited, resources or means to satisfy them are scarce or limited, and resources have alternative uses. Generally, economics can be defined as follows. Economics is a study of problems regarding choice that must be made due to scarcity of resources. It examines how the scarce resources can be used for the maximum fulfillment of human wants. Economics is a study of how society manages scarce resources. Students, in today's lesson, we have learned about the meaning and scope of economics. Let me summarize what we have discussed in today's lesson. We have defined economics from perspectives of wealth, welfare and scarcity. We also noted the various definitions share some general truths. In our next program, you will learn about the nature, branches and significance of economics. This brings us to the end of today's lesson. See you in our next program. Until then, it's goodbye from me.
Thank you.